Hello, my name is Peter Sumner. I'm the Controls Electrical Manager here at Modine. And today we're here to talk about the importance of advanced monitoring and troubleshooting. So on our Ethereum product, we use um, what's called Corel Controls, and we actually program that here ourselves. So that's good for the customer because they can ask us for a specific sequence of operation and we're able to do that for them. So they get exactly what they need on their customer's site. Using the Corel controls, we offer BACnet over MSTP, BACnet over Ethernet, and LON connectivity. And obviously that can connect into most large BMS systems. Using the BACnet card, we offer over 200 variables that the customer can monitor. 45 of them points are read-write variables, which means the customer can actually interface and make the changes to the unit. Some of them are damper control and fan control, and this gives him the opportunity to do enthalpy economizer using his own BMS, or duct pressurization, or even building pressurization. We also offer 80 alarms, so the customer, without going up onto the roof to actually inspect the unit, can actually view via the BMS and see what alarm and what issues he has before he even has to go to site. So all of these 200 variables can actually be sent via the BACnet interface out to a, a building management system. So a customer could have it in his, in his office and it would mean that he didn't have to go up to the roof to actually see what was how the unit was operating. So when the unit's running, you can actually get real-time data from them 200 variables, which means you can actually see the system's health and performance while it's operating. When looking at the BMS variables, you can actually go as far to look at the um, electronic expansion valves and the subcool and the superheat. And by doing that, you can actually troubleshoot the unit, which means if you go in, look at your values, you can actually work out whether the unit is low on refrigerant due to the fact that the superheat is very high and the valve is fully open. And you can also look at whether the subcool is where you expect it to be. And this can point you towards whether the unit is short of refrigerant or actually has an issue. And that's all done through the PC without even going up to the unit. So each Ethereum comes with a built-in display, which means that the customer can actually scroll through and see all of the values that we were talking about over the BMS. He can actually see them real time stood in front of the unit as well. Not only do you get the built-in display, but you also have an option for a remote display. The good thing about the remote display is it can be fitted anywhere from zero to 600 feet away from the unit, which means you can install it in a maintenance room or something like that, which gives the customer the opportunity to be able to interface with the unit without actually going up onto the roof. In the software that we've developed for the Corel controller, it actually gives you all of your alarms in plain text. So rather than having an error code, you actually get a information telling you that it's a supply air fan failure. The good thing about that is before you go up to the unit you actually know what the fault is. So each time we generate an alarm we take a snapshot of the running conditions. The good thing with this is it helps you diagnose what the what caused the issue. One nice thing about the Corel controller is it actually logs 200 of your alarms. So you can actually go back over historical data and see the last 200 alarms that you've had in the unit. And it'll also show you the running conditions at each of them alarms. Because we're pulling all of this information back to the controller, we decided that we would add the compressor operating envelopes into the software. What this means is by measuring condensing temperature and condensing pressure and evaporating temperature and evaporating pressure, then we can plot where the compressor is actually running. And if it's outside of the safe operating zone for the compressor, we can actually shut off the cooling if it's been outside for more than five minutes. What we've done with this is we've actually put it on retry logic. So the first alarm, the compressor will shut off and then we'll automatically restart. But if you get two out of envelope alarms within 60 minutes, it actually locks out the cooling. You'd get that alarm over the BMS or through the handheld, and then the customer would have to come and clear the alarm and then actually investigate what the problem was. 
Because the control is actually mounted in a high voltage panel, we've actually added the option for a remote port to plug in your display. The reason we've done this is because the unit would have to be switched off by the isolator to be able to plug into the controller. So this is really nice for a service engineer because he has the option to connect into the unit, read all the values without having to shut the unit down. This option isn't required on a D cabinet because we've actually added a 24 volt control panel which houses the controller. So you don't actually need to worry about that on a D cabinet. So today we've talked about three options, the built-in display, the remote display, and the BMS interface cards. With all three of them options, you can interface, you can troubleshoot, and you can monitor the units. So as you can see with the mode-in control system, you really have lots of options to interface with the unit.